good morning so um, in this lecture we are going to uh, look at uh, how can we have a simplified model of two uh, head on head collision of vehicle and the vehicle structure we will treat uh, the structure to act as a linear spring model so if that is so uh, we are going to first in hand uh, prove that um, um, uh, the heavier uh, heavier the uh, stiffness of the vehicle will have smaller the change in velocity so we have understood the significance of change in velocities after the collision because uh, if there are two vehicles uh, collide head on head and there are uh, um, uh, change in velocity before and after uh, uh, velocity difference that is delta v1 and delta v2 if we have if we add that to that's what is equal to closing velocity is approach velocity that's what we have seen some relationship in the last class and uh, today's class we are going to look at um, uh, of course in the last class we also have looked at what is the total crush energy that's involved in a vehicle uh, uh, and uh, how can we uh, look at uh, uh, the effect of masses of vehicle uh, on this change in velocity right so today's class we are going to look at uh, what is the crush energy that an individual vehicle is going to have uh, with the help of uh, uh, simplified uh, spring model of vehicle so and then we will continue with the non central impact uh, scenario how can we um, uh, have a uh, similar parameters like change in velocities uh, in offset impact collision so this is what in brief uh, uh, today's lecture that we are going to learn <clears throat> So let me share my screen. So you are able to view the screen. Uh, my Acti Inspire board. Uh, let's just to briefly look at what we were doing in the last class. So in the last class, we essentially looked at a direct central impact in order to understand the two aspects. What are those? Is total crush energy involved in collision and change in velocities to find out so this speed change of the vehicle is inversely proportional to its mass so that means heavier the vehicle smaller the change in speed that's what we have understood and proved that in last class considering two colliding vehicle head on head and uh, there is perfectly inelastic collision that means a fully plastic uh, collision so the uh, end of the collision or uh, maximum deformation uh, period, uh, the vehicle uh, go together with the common velocity Vc. So we were able to express the expressions of delta V and delta V2, delta V1 and delta V2 in terms of uh, equivalent mass and the closing velocity. So uh, equation 7.27 is very important. That further helped us to uh, express uh, uh, delta V1 and delta V2 in terms of total crush energy, which is delta E, and uh, also we, uh, that helps us to prove uh, the change in uh, velocity uh, is inversely proportional to uh, its mass. That's what we have uh, proved in the last class. So today's class, we are going to look at individual crush energy considering vehicle to vehicle uh, impact model. So this is lecture number eighteen. Today's date is thirty seven twenty twenty one. We're going to look at individual 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 crash energy. energy of the vehicle so let's consider the model called vehicle equal to vehicle vehicle to vehicle model it's called vehicle to vehicle impact model right so what is the main assumption here is this vehicle to vehicle impact model uh, we consider see a mass of one vehicle 
M1 and its frontal structure, which is going to interact with the collision by a linear spring model. So let's say this is K1, this is vehicle 1. So I just represent the vehicle 1 here. And uh, you have another vehicle with the frontal structure element with the spring constant, linear spring constant K2. And this vehicle is M2. This is a simplified model. The main assumption here is, important assumption here is what linear or force crash a distance relationship force crash distance relationship so we will have that as f is equal to the crash force which is acting during the crash event the exchange force is what is equal to k times x so this is that uh, we look at it so you know this spring force is constant whereas uh, um, for a given uh, position of x, correct? It would vary only uh, as x varies. Uh, so during the collision event, uh, you should understand also. So in this expression, you know what is x is uh, the amount of deformation in the crash. What is k is uh, the proportionality factor, that stiffness of frontal structure of the vehicle. And uh, this f is force generated during the crash crash process. So this is uh, force generator during the crash process. So that's what uh, you should understand. So now importantly, see when you take spring mass system, a spring if you take and the two linear spring, we know that the force in the spring equation stays constant at any given value of x. Any given value of x k is constant so force remains constant whereas in collision process you should be aware of this whereas in collision process uh, you see this force is transient this force is transient transient in nature and dropping to zero and dropping to zero if if x does not increase or continue continue to increase what do you mean by this continue to increase that is unloading process so what is that uh, important assumption that also we make it is perfectly perfectly plastic or inelastic impact. So when you say that E equals zero, right? That's what you understand. So when you say E equals zero, there is a restitution period uh, and your uh, energy dissipated would be same as of delta E because one minus E squared, this goes zero. So this is all from Kelvin's theorem that we have proved, that we are aware of, right? So now, <laughs> If it is perfectly plastic and then uh, the spring, uh, uh, its own natural behavior that uh, any time the spring force is constant for the given value of x, because linear spring model k is constant that we consider, will not be the case in case of uh, uh, collision scenario. And the force what's acting is a transient, it's for momentarily only it's act acting transient in nature and dropping to zero if x does not continue to increase. What do you mean by x does not continue to increase? Vehicle collide and then uh, plastic deformation. There is no uh, regaining of its uh, um, spring action further present. So there is no unloading process. Because of that, the energy would get dissipated completely if we consider E is equal to zero. So that is what we should be aware of. So uh, the spring force is not uh, always there, but that is instantaneous. And if you understand that, uh, you should also parallelly understand what would happen to the energy that's um, present. So the stored energy in spring always, how do you get, if you look at the relationship of spring force, Fs, to x. It is linear spring when you consider it is like this. 
So if I choose any different uh, position x1 between x1 and x2, the energy that is stored is the area under this curve. So how do you get this? This was simply obtained by integration of this work done. Work done is what is energy? Work done from position one to two would be integral Fs into dx. So it is integral x1 to x2 it is. Uh, x1 to x2 it is. So it is Fx is what is k into x dx. So you get it is half k uh, x1 square x2 square minus half k x2 x1 square so you have it uh, like this right that's what is uh, uh, strain energy stored or energy stored in the spring or work done from one to two and so on for the uh, linear spring model in this case, what is happening uh, in collision process, this entire energy getting dissipated, does not store. So this energy is dissipated fully and no energy, sleeping energy is stored. Store. So this is what you should be aware of when you make this simplified uh, model to represent vehicle head-on head collision. So now let's un, uh, define the following and then proceed with the understanding uh, uh, the derivation for the change in velocity is this. So let's call x1 and x2 a deformation or deformation of M1 and M2 respectively during collision. That's first uh, uh, statement. And uh, let delta E1, delta E1 is the crush energy. Energy of M1. How do you get that? It's going to be integral F dx. That's going to be integral K1 x1 dx. So I would have half K1 x1 square. In the similar fashion, I can also have an individual uh, crush energy of vehicle 2, which is delta E2. That's going to be what crash energy of m2 that's going to be integral f dx and integral k2 x2 dx that's going to be of k2 x2 square so let's call this equation as equation 7.30 i continue with the previous lecture if you refer back you'll see this equation uh, in um, uh, textbook with the same number so that's easy for you to understand what I do in the class. So now the ratios of this uh, crush energy delta E1 by delta E2 would be what now? This ratio. This ratio. So that's going to be half k x1 square by half k x2 square. So this half, this k1, k2 half goes off so i have the same what is this is nothing but now i can rewrite this as f f is constant uh, here exchange force that's x into f into x1 so k1 x1 is f into x1 divided by f into x2 so that's going to be equal to now x1 by x2 f of goes so x1 by x2 so if this side k1 x1 square by k2 x2 square is equal to x1 by x2 is same as that of uh, giving the ratio k2 2 by k1 k2 2 k2 by k1 ratio so let's call this equation as 7.31 so i hope you understand this uh, yeah, ratios it is energy ratio of individual crush uh, energy ratio of individual vehicle and that's return force into x1, force into x2, force goes off, so x1 by x2. So this is equal to this when I do kx1 
k1 x1 by k2 x2 uh, equals 1. So that is why you get x1 by x2 is equal to k2 by k1. So you understand this now. So what does that you understand here? Uh, what does that to be noted? The amount of crash energy is inverse to the spring constant of the structure involved in the crash. So the amount of crash energy here, delta E1 of vehicle 1 is inversely proportional to the frontal structure stiffness involved during the collision. That is what does this delta E1 by delta E2 is proportional to K2 by K1, K2 by K1. That's what you understand from this. So what does that mean? The stiffer the vehicle, the less of the total crush energy absorbed. So what is the meaning of this statement, this ratio? A stiffer, stiffer the vehicle, the less, less the total crush energy absorbed. absorbed. So this is what you understand from this statement. So now let's continue with this to get uh, what is the individual vehicle energies. That's what delta E1 and delta E2 and that partition between the two vehicles. So what is the proportion that goes into vehicle 1 and what is the proportion of energy that goes into vehicle 2 if you look at. I can write this ratio delta E1 that's in the first vehicle crush energy with the available total crush energy of the event, delta E. So that's what uh, that's going to be equal to half K1 X1 square divided by, what is delta E total energy? That's delta E1 plus delta E2. So that's half K2, so K1 X1 square plus half K2 X, X2 square. So if I divide uh, the numerator by the same value and denominator by the same value of uh, delta E1, what do I get? That's going to be 1 by uh, 1 plus K2 X2 square by K1 X1 square. So what is K2 X2 squared by K1 X1 square? We have proved that in the previous equation. That's 1 plus 1 plus K1 by K2, K1 by K2. So that's going to be K2 by K1 plus K2. So in terms of spring, frontal structure stiffness of both the vehicle, I would be able to say what is the partition or portion of uh, the vehicle crush energy out of the total crush energy given by K2 by this. I can also rewrite this in this fashion, uh, delta E1, by delta E as uh, here this K1 by K2, let me call it as RK. Like you had a M1 by M2 by RM, I'm going to have uh, let K1 by K2 is RK and K2 by K1 as RK dash. Like we defined the M1 by M2 is RM, M2 by M1 is M RM dash earlier. Let's have this. So what is this going to be? 1 by 1 plus rk subscript k refer to stiffness involved subscript m in the previous case what we have seen is involving mass right so this is equation one so in the similar fashion i can also write the uh, individual vehicle energy of portion of vehicle two to that of uh, the available total crash energy of the collision would be I can prove this similar fashion, delta E2 by delta E1 plus delta E2. So substituting that, I would be able to prove that it's going to be K1 by K1 plus K2 or it's equal to 1 by 1 plus RK dash. That's my second equation. So these two equations as per the textbook, it is 7.32 equation number, 7.32. So equation 7.31 is what we had written in the previous page. Uh, this is the equation 7.31. Equation 
is this equation, this ratio. And uh, equation 7.32 gives us the proportions now uh, of the uh, crush energy. So now uh, further with this, what we can do is, it's very interesting that you look at uh, if, if, if uh, RK, RK tends to zero. What do you mean by RK tends to zero? K1 is or K2 much, much greater than K1. So K2 is much, much greater than K1. Then what will happen? What is RK? So RK is K1 by K2. If K2 is very great than that of K1, that's equal to zero. So if RK is equal to zero, what does that you will have? Uh, you are going to have, uh, that's going to be the scenario of delta E1 from this equation one. So one of 7.32, what would happen? Delta E1 is going to be delta E completely. And uh, here this is going to be zero, so it's one. So this scenario, so what does that mean? It is that barrier, full frontal barrier, crasher, rigid crash barrier uh, is having stiffness infinity. So rigid frontal barrier. is k2 infinity you understand so we started here stating vehicle to vehicle model but in that case if i have k2 is approximately infinity value then what would happen R rk is zero that refer to what uh, vehicle one colliding with that barrier impactor so the same equations can be used for vehicle to barrier impact so in such case you have the entire crush energy of vehicle one is what is the total crush energy of the event there is no energy is absorbed by the frontal barrier the meaning is there is no energy no energy is absorbed by barrier so that's what uh, is this special case. If RK tends to zero, that means K2 is much, much greater than K1. That is nothing but K2 is of most infinity value. So this ratio is zero. So you are able to have the same vehicle to vehicle model uh, to represent this. So in this model, what does that meaning? You have here uh, uh, this. So if K2 is infinity, this is not a vehicle, it's full frontal barrier. So to have this vehicle, K1, and this is a barrier, rigid barrier if I have. This is mass M2 and the K2, very stiff, infinity. So if I have the same model can be looked at for full frontal impact of the vehicle. So it's a simplified. Uh, model vehicle to vehicle collision or vehicle to full frontal uh, impact. So if you have understood this, let's now write the change in velocities uh, of this individual vehicle before and after collision, right? So uh, um, since it is E is equal to zero, it is with the common velocity, right? So you have now uh, delta V1, we derive this. So the delta V1 will be uh, v1 minus vc and uh, why v1 minus vc v1 direction is this and vc direction also in this direction so the difference delta v2 is v1 vc plus v2 v2 because uh, v2 is in this direction approaching uh, run and uh, if this is so, you would have now the change in velocity is this is delta V1 and this is going to be delta 
V2. Vc minus of minus V2. That's what has become this. Vc plus V2. We have seen that earlier this equation uh, in our last class. And uh, if you have understood this, we also have derived this equation uh, like this delta V1 can be expressed in terms of total crush energy of the vehicle to vehicle collision delta E by M1 into R plus Rm. You can R1 plus Rm. You can see this equation was derived in the last class. So now I can substitute in this for um, delta E. Right? So this equation would further, how does it become? Uh, if I put Rm as uh, M1 by M1, M2 by, sorry, this M1 by M2, if I substitute, the same equation is going to be uh, I'm just going to substitute for uh, delta E. So delta E in this, uh, we have derived delta E as uh, the equation one. So if you look at 7.32, the equation here, 7.32, this equation here. So delta E1 is what? Is delta E by 1 plus RK, right? Delta E goes on that side. So 1 plus RK. So I'm going to substitute this in this equation, delta E in place of delta E. So that I'll get change in velocity by an individual vehicle crush energy portion. So 2 into delta E1 by Delta E1 into 1 plus RK by M1 into 1 plus RM. So this is for delta V1. Similarly, I can get for the second vehicle change in velocity. That's going to be 2 into delta E by M2 into 1 plus RM dash, which we had already uh, in our last class. So that's going to be now replacing. So similarly, what we had here, we'll just look at back again, uh, equation 7.32. I can rewrite here delta E2 as delta E by delta E by uh, or delta. Uh, so delta E is delta E1 into this. So here delta E would be uh, delta E2 into 1 plus RK dash. So delta in place of delta E, I'm substituting this. So that's going to be here under root of 2 into delta E2 into 1 plus RK dash by M1 into, sorry, M2 into 1 plus RM dash. So here, what does Rm? See, M1 by M2. What does Rm dash? M2 by M1. So this set equation, that's called 7.33. So you can also express this in terms of uh, closing velocity. Closing velocity is what? Approach velocity. So that we can do it very well here. Um, uh, what is that I'm going to write? What is that individual energy? So these are individual change in velocity. What is this delta E1? Delta E1, if I have to get, uh, that is also um, possible here. So let's look at how, the, how can we do that, right? So you have here uh, one plus, So uh, I have to write now uh, delta, uh, let me write this and if you do not get, I will explain it. So delta E1, uh, that's the energy, uh, crush energy of vehicle one would be M1 by two into one by one plus RM into one plus RK into V close square. Similarly, delta E2 
we can write m2 by 2 into 1 by 1 plus rm dash into 1 plus rk dash into v close square. So what is v close is relative velocity of approach, right? So uh, this is what is the energy portion, proportion uh, uh, of both the vehicle. Let's call this equation as 7.34, uh, uh, first equation, second equation, 7.35. So how can you get this uh, from this equation? It's simple. Uh, I can prove that uh, we had earlier uh, the uh, derivation 1 by 1 plus Rm from uh, impulse and momentum principle. When we applied, we got this. We can refer back. Uh, this is close velocity, close. Closing velocity. Square. Here it was Rm square. Right? Um, <coughs> why? Because uh, we had this delta V uh, 1 can be written in terms of 1 by 1 plus Rm uh, into V close. So uh, we can have this. Uh, so if I square this, so delta V1 expression, we have it here. Delta V1 expression, we have it here. So if I square this, uh, um, what will happen? Delta V1 square would be this square, and that would be equal to, uh, what is the expression of delta V1 we had here in terms of uh, simplified model? This one. So 2 into delta E1 uh, into this. So let me just use that expression here now. So that's going to be equal to, since it is squared here, it is 2 into delta E1 into 1 plus Rk by M1 into 1 plus Rm. So this is what is proving uh, 7.34 now. Uh, delta E1 I wanted. So delta E1 from this is what is, if I take this uh, other uh, elements on the other side, it's going to be M1. 1 plus Rm uh, divided by 2 into 1 plus Rm square uh, into 1 plus, this is brought down, so 1 plus Rk uh, into V close square. So this 1 plus Rm and this goes off. I get M1 by 2 into 1 plus Rm into 1 plus Rk into V close square. So this is the equation 7.34. Right? Similarly, for vehicle 2, uh, you can uh, prove it because delta V2 is equal to 1 plus Rm dash into V close. So you'll be able to prove 7.35 also. So this is what uh, uh, going to give you now what individual crash energy. So this is individual crash energies of the vehicle. Of the vehicle. Vehicles, right? So this is all uh, uh, as far as central impact is concerned that uh, we are going to look at it. Central impact, when you say it is only of two cases, one is a vehicle uh, hitting with the uh, three cases, it can be possible. So when vehicle go forward, other vehicle follows and hits. Otherwise, uh, rigid barrier and vehicle goes and hits or head on head collision. So these are the um, uh, three cases are possible for direct central impact. Uh, and uh, we have learned sufficiently required uh, mathematics and the equations uh, to quantify uh, whether it is a total crush energy or it is an individual vehicle crush energy or it is the requirement of um, uh, individual uh, vehicle velocity change and so on. So this is all to do what was very importantly uh, we had an equivalent, uh, uh, it's not called equivalent, the effective, effective uh, uh, 
uh, of the system. When you have two vehicles, the effective mass Me is equal to M1, M2 by M1 plus M2. So that concept is what is used uh, to bring in the application of relative velocity approach. So this is all something that we have learned so far in central impact. I'm going to start with now non-central impact uh, problem, right? So, so are you free in the next period, uh, coming period? Can I take another 20 minutes also, the lectures? Or shall we see that sir, in the I next class? Sir, I have class, sir. Yeah, so what I'll do, I'll stop at this point of time. Uh, we will see uh, that in the next class on uh, um, Monday, D1 slot. So Monday now onwards, uh, it is not in A1 slot. So from next week onwards, uh, we will have class uh, instead of A1 slot, I will take D1 slot and A2 slot. So this is the timing that we will be meeting for our lectures. And uh, another two more lectures to compensate, I will do that in the coming week. As I also said, you please uh, prepare your um, uh, um, presentations uh, and your literature's uh, compilation for uh, your uh, J component review in the next week. I would post the schedule uh, in the next week timing. Right, so you have to adhere to that timing. So, with that note, uh, let me stop now, and we will see non-central impact uh, uh, in the next class. Is that fine? Any doubts uh, in today's discussion? Yes, sir. Um, it's not not exactly a doubt, but I just want to know. This is like a a, a very simplified version of um, what actually happens, right? Because I would imagine that uh, the amount of energy that um, like it won't be linear is what my question is. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, we, we, but it is uh, quite a viable model. See, whatever the model that we have is a simplified model, considering there are many components in the frontal structure and uh, there are many lumped masses that are present in your vehicle. But we make a vehicle as one complete mass M1 and then uh, the uh, deforming structure as this uh, linear spring model. But uh, with the full awareness that uh, linear spring behavior is uh, the spring force is constant uh, for any given value of x. Whereas uh, in, during the collision, the force what is going to be experienced uh, uh, is a very short duration and that is impulsive force and it is transient in nature. So, right? so for like uh, when yeah. we're assuming we're designing a, a vehicle from scratch, that time yeah. uh, we won't be using such a simple model, right? This is more for like safety purpose alone. Yeah, yeah, this is more for a safety purpose only. And uh, see, that is what you see. This uh, simple model has been made as a very complex uh, uh, spring uh, mass model, LMS, right? Uh, lumped spring mass model of many uh, springs and uh, uh, lump masses uh, in order to replicate a real time vehicle. And uh, the results were uh, uh, available from the literatures. Right, that okay, also sir. is there. You can see, uh, but for the time being, learning this course, uh, I just go with the content of the syllabus. What can be learned uh, to have a uh, wholesome idea? So you should be able to um, uh, eliminate the assumption. So uh, as it is going to be, it's not even non-linear spring. That's what it's very interesting aspect here, because if it is elastic in nature, then you will have dynamic force, and then there will be more of uh, uh, unloading possibilities are there. But we make an assumption that uh, the impact is going to be fully inelastic impact. So when you make that, uh, the vehicle crash and the transit uh, uh, force, and that disappears. And then what is happening? Uh, the energy which normally uh, in a linear spring model would get stored, also get dissipated uh, as a heat form. So because of the reason that there is no change in the value of X after the collision, of that shortest duration. So if we have to have that, uh, this model having the two stiffness with the uh, uh, interaction structures uh, with these two masses are the very much appreciated uh, uh, good model for uh, having first hand analysis uh, of collision event, right? Okay, sir. And uh, of course, you know, see, please go through this uh, uh, vehicle crash mechanics by Matthew Hume. Uh, you have uh, chapter six, you look at uh, whatever that I was telling you, basics all are there in that, uh, right? And then they come to chapter seven. And you see uh, chapter four also, you have uh, this lumped spring mass models where you have uh, those can be solved um, by finite difference method or 
uh, you can convert them all into uh, the um, uh, convenient uh, algebraic form and then you can solve. Such things are um, mostly of research based. Of course, uh, we will see uh, some of the results of such models and how uh, those models are more realistic to that of real time vehicle collision uh, crash impulses. Like you see, what is the objective in the beginning classes I was telling? It is all ultimately to know what is your crash pulse. That is the deceleration. So uh, that is your deceleration history with respect to time. Uh, uh, there are uh, kinematic variables of this uh, deceleration pulse that was asked in the exam. You have written down those all, right? <laughs> so uh, this uh, deceleration uh, history is what is important. The deceleration history is what is important. Uh, that is going to be useful for energy management of the uh, vehicle. So crash energy management itself is an important uh, understanding for the vehicle uh, design developer for safety point of view so that the entire energy that uh, uh, not able to get into dissipation there are some energy uh, uh, that's present uh, even those are very vulnerable because that energy get uh, uh, transferred to the occupant in the form of rebound energy and that energy management is what is uh, uh, given a scope of uh, coming out with a um, passive restraint system such as uh, airbags or um, uh, your seat belts and knee pads and so on right is it clear yes sir yeah so any any other doubts uh, if you do not have i'll stop at this point of time or lecture and stop sharing Stop recording.